It's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and this week I'm not in a truck or SUV, I'm in a van. <laughs> yeah, this is a full-size 2021 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van. It's got the high roof. We have a six-liter, three, uh, no, six-cylinder diesel in this and in, in this underneath the hood. Sorry, we had just we had transported our golf game here to South Dakota and finished getting uh, basically blown off the course by the heat. It was so hot today, so we are on our way back, and I wanted to make sure I talked about this. Mercedes-Benz with my friend Russ and um, it's been interesting we, we drove 140 miles up here which is basically about two hours we have another couple hour drive back and I don't know Russ my butt's feeling pretty good your butt not bad at all yeah I mean, the air conditioning it's comfortable yeah it's pretty comfortable we haven't had uh, um, any really concerns of the bad roads we definitely feel the bad roads See, th this thing doesn't have much suspension right. it's a 144 inch wheelbase so pretty long wheelbase and uh, you do feel those roads all right, speaking of bad roads, this is the bad road. You can hear it just, it just moves you around a little bit. You can hear the uh, uh, rear window there kind of clicking, click, 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 click when it hits. And so this is, uh, this van isn't so hot when it's, the roads aren't so good. <laughs> you definitely feel it. As far as visibility, I mean, <laughs> it's a van, we see everything. Even we, we've even seen the two birds that we kind of hit. Um, so we saw those suckers coming up. So this uh, is a bird magnet. Yeah, but there's some steel on the road. For sure, um, for sure, bird magnet. Be careful about that. But I really wanted to talk about in this video, I want to show you some stuff in the rear storage area. This is the cargo van. I'm going to clean up my garage to begin, so I put some footage on there. Um, our golf clubs, well, are rolling around. Are rolling around. <laughs> we, we got plenty of room back there. We got room for days. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a pretty comfortable drive. Uh, driving position is, is superb. Um, I'm able to see everything really well. Like I said, visibility is great. Comfort's good. And uh, right now I'm averaging 21.8 miles per gallon. We've driven 153 miles with nothing in this vehicle. So I think overall payload is like 3,741 3, pounds, if I remember the website correctly. And you can get some different functions and as far as options in this, um, like alloy wheels instead of the steel wheels if you want to. This is an aqua kind of green color, which um, you've seen it a couple days now. I've been driving it. it it's a weird green. It's, yeah, it's forest green. Man. Sometimes it's, it's like, forest green, sometimes it's bright green. It's just a really interesting green. So let me get mine. I'm gonna set, go ahead and set the cruise. So again, comfortable driving, uh, good visibility. Um, I'll do some more as far as talking about inside the cabin as well. There's um, it's interesting. There's the, the mirror's useless. Digital, yeah. This mirror is ridiculous. They should have a digital rear view mirror. See, you can't see anything. I can see a reflection of this this right. here. That's it. Um, the controls and steering wheel are a slide back and forth by your finger instead of having buttons to get to the menus. Um, I'll put some footage on the screen here for B-roll of that. That's really weird. It takes a while to get used to. So this what I was talking about here. This is where it swipe, swipes. You can see it change in there. And that's that, that's all these work like this. I do have the controls here, controls here, and controls here. And the cubby hole there, radio there, yeah there, things like that. Then up top is the USB for the phone. Okay. But overall, uh, it's really fun. Fun fun to drive around. It's a little bit too tall for us though. Yeah. Getting in and out, the door is open really wide, but a big step down. <laughs> I'm about six <laughs> inches short of making that a comfortable step. So there's been some uh, stuff there. But let's go ahead and talk about the, the, the rear in a little bit and we'll kind of do some more stuff in this uh, this van. Um, I don't know what order I'll do things, but I kinda of wanna go through and tell you what I'm what I'm experiencing and show you more of this interior. So let's go ahead and get started on that. There you go, visual representation of everything you can carry with all of our stuff from our garage in the van. Let's see if I can get this open all the way. There we go. So we got a couple of bikes. I got a piece of mat there. Got some uh, bins back there. Things we need to put in the back in the garage shed back here. Excuse me, our shed in the back. So there you go. That's uh, the best I can do to show you how much volume we can get into this cargo area. Okay, we're starting to unload the back, and so this is kind of what you got. All right, 
And one other thing I want to talk about is that my digital sound level meter. I've used this out a few times in different vehicles. I don't remember what those other vehicles were as far as decibel levels, but I want to check this one because you would think it's a big van, tall windshield, uh, metal inside, not very much, there's not much very sound deadening in here. I'm just curious how loud it is. So let's go ahead and put it on the screen. It's about 72, 74, some that range. It seems like when I look at it. And so most of the sound you do hear, you can hear the tires. You can hear the tires right. quite a bit. That's about it. I mean, overall, it's not bad. I would think, though, this is not a very windy day. I was hoping it was a little bit windier up here, to be frank with you. Um, I think it's probably a windier day or in a, you know, a louder city situation. It's probably quite a bit, maybe two, three, four decibels louder in here with those conditions. But this is pretty comfortable. Oh, one other thing to mention. Lane departure. When it notices you're near a lane, it doesn't just move you over, it brakes too. Ah, that's fun. <laughs> Hold on, I just noticed this. I was just driving along, and this system here is actually traction control. So you turn that off, you can see traction control light comes on. So that's ESP is traction control. Doom, boom, boom. And then here, that's active lane keep assist. And you can see it, it shows up there, and it shows up there when it's off. And so. Those are the two features. And one more thing, the steering wheel, it tilts and it telescopes. So it's pretty nice. I mean, seating position is pretty ideal for anybody. And again, 5'7", I can see a lot of windshield. I have a lot of windows space there. So it's really comfortable behind the wheel as far as placement of the seat and lumbar and the steering wheel. All right, just got back to the house. We're now at 19.8 miles per gallon because I've been uh, idling a little bit. When I pulled in, it was 20.1. I got 20, was it 22 when I updated you heading towards South Dakota. So I think pretty good. I mean, for the size the vehicle is and for how heavy it is, um, I will get the stats up on the side, the GVWR and that kind of stuff. Uh, you do have a 24.5 gallon tank. So you're probably gonna need to fill up about 20, mile, 20 gallons. You're not gonna fill up the full, because you have a five gallons reserve. So you basically can go about 100 miles in reserve, which is great because some places in South Dakota we're at, there's not gas stations. <laughs> There's no gas stations out there. Uh, I will tell you that the steering is pretty good. It steers really nice as far as getting into parking spots it, it, with the, where the front wheels are really far forward in this vehicle. Um, you can pull in really nice, turns really nice, easy. Um, no problems there. Parking it was not a big issue. Uh, brakes. The brakes are tight. I, I, you can tell this thing's set up for more weight. You can tell the suspension's set up for more weight, and so having it empty, you can feel those things coming out probably more than you would once you weigh it that way, you know, weigh it down with, with luggage or whatever, you, cargo, what, uh, living out of, what are you doing in this vehicle? But I can tell you the brakes are pretty tight. Uh, I had a few times where I was flying forward my seat trying to make sure I didn't uh, uh, hit my head because I hit the brakes a little bit too hard. So a little bit softer in the brakes is probably the, the right thing to do here with this vehicle. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep going and we're gonna talk about some more stuff. Okay, that was quite the road trip, so I want to slow down the video a little bit. So this today they're gonna pick it up and they're gonna swap me vehicles. I'm gonna get something else to review. Before I do that, I kind of want to go over the interior a little bit more in detail and tell you some things that well stood out to me during the week of driving it. And I have a whole list here of things that uh, stood out to me. But I just let me flip this around a little bit because I kind of feel like it went a little bit too fast the other day in the camera. But so we have the controls here. This is a parking brake, automatic parking brake. You can see it it pops on there. It's actually part of a package. You can add lots of packages to this vehicle. We have our mirror controls there. I do have some seat controls there, plus heated seat bottom is what I take that to be. Um, over here we have some controls here, which is interesting here is we can look at the home. So if I press home, it goes, you can see it kind of change on the screen here, but I need to come back here. So this is a finger touch movement, which I had to read the manual a little bit to figure that out. It's really interesting how that works. And I'm surprised because it's so sensitive to your fingers that I'm sure there's complaints from people who wear gloves for a living or if you have to put your gloves on, you gotta take them off. It's just, it's an interesting thing they did there. Uh, we have the cruise control set up there as well. And we also have the controls for the radio over here. And you can see I can press the home and go home and I can kind of go, again, I can go back and forth by doing this button. It's kind of interesting. So, and then you can go into different things, into settings and look at different things like um, active lane keep assist on or the emergency um, ESP. So that's gotta be emergency stopping or braking. I don't know, I can't remember all these, all these words are using stuff, but there's different settings here. Uh, attention assist, 
Oh, whether you pay attention, need to pull over, that comes up on a lot of people's screens. And then overall vehicle, acoustic lock, automatic door lock, gas station surge, all that kinds of different things. So, uh, lots of information there. That is a touch screen here, which is nice and goes back and forth. It looks really good. The only um, challenge is it's kind of small. So if you do the, the cameras, you have this really big vehicle, <laughs> this really small camera, and this is the biggest size screen they make for that. So it's kind of odd. Um, I did find a place with a cell phone. Boom. You can hook it up here. There's a USB up there, but I just, that's gonna overheat like crazy up there. So I'm not gonna do that. I have heat controls here, and I have the uh, cup holders there. Now there is a package that puts a, a, a center console here with a flip-up lid you can get that package as well like an upfitting package we have the separate glove box there as well so um, we do have the convenience package here which is going to be lighting stuff like that is going to be up in here and then we have ah sunglass holders up there I like that feature a lot and a little bit of storage up here so that is based on the inside let me go ahead and um, I'll hop in the um, cargo area the big area here in a second but I, I just wanted to point out the things we pointed out in the video today no digital rear, rear view mirror which is surprising to me because even the upfitting sections I can't find a way to add that option and to me I want to be able to see behind me it's a big vehicle like I, I'm just mystified by how small these cameras are and how small that backup camera is it's just it's like this is big I want more cameras I get vehicles that are smaller and I have a lot more cameras and so I'm just surprised from like a cargo like driver standpoint or from like a camping standpoint Nice to have more cameras. I have big mirrors, but cameras, 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 cameras. Um, another thing that's, that's interesting was like the, the heated seat button. I thought was kind of weird that didn't have um, a heated seat. It also didn't have cooled seats either. I thought that was odd. I mean, you know, with all the things happening in the world, we're getting hotter, that kind of stuff. I think cooled seats would be something. The other thing I got to talk to you about, <laughs> this is not going to look so graceful, is um, it's a long way down. <laughs> It's, it's a long way down. So I'm five foot seven, and uh, I've had, <laughs> that's what I've been doing all week. Um, I'm just about six inches too short for making the full step down. So a little running board or something, muy bono, muy good for me. But uh, over here, it's interesting, I thought it was cool. All your fuses panels right there. So that's really nice because you don't have to reach underneath the dash to get all the fuses you normally do. Little panel there, now the other side, below that passenger seat is just empty storage in there. They actually left that, left that open. You just have some storage. So we have a little bit of lumbar in here as well. This is another package upgrade. So it's interesting. I have lumbar. I have, I have the manual controlled seats with seat uh, settings. I have heated seats. I don't have cool seats. I don't know. It's just a little, just I find things a little odd for this vehicle for that case. This is, like I said, it's a three liter uh, V6 underneath the hood listen to it hum a little bit. Made it to a seven speed automatic transmission. So, yeah, not that loud. I, I haven't had any problems with that. Um, starts up really nice. Uh, you do have the glow plug warning for it being a diesel, but then it starts up right away, so it's not a big deal. Okay, again, here's that engine one more time. You kind of hear it in there, a little diesel engine. Really compact. Winch wiper fluid in there too, easy to access. This is great. This is depth right here. That's easy to get to, although most people put it over by the uh, fuel inlet. But, so this is separate. So interesting point there. And then, well, oh, that's air. You see air in there, and then you have the covering to keep it quiet. But uh, speaking of interesting things, one more thing I got to show you is, and this was pointed out to me by the guy who dropped it off because he didn't think of all to figure out where it was is. And I don't blame him, but uh, yeah, there's your diesel fill up. It's here. There's no markings. And if you close the door, um, how do you know it's there? <laughs> it's so strange. And it, this has 3,704 pounds of payload, which I couldn't max out because I don't have that much stuff to put in there. Uh, it has a 5,000 pound towing hitch we'll put in the back, but I have D-rings and this is a carpet. This is an additional uh, 300, 350 bucks basically. Everything's like 350, 346. Well, these are different options, but this is the carpet, D-rings. You can, on the website, add panels, built-in panels for different things. Um, so like if, if you're a plumber, electrician, whatever, they actually sell panels you can bolt in. I thought that was interesting. One thing I thought was interesting, there's no like pro power on board. There should be like, I see gonna be power back here, some outlets or things. And you can see the wiring is probably pre-built in. You know, I'm not an upfitter, so I'm not sure how they run the wiring, but it seems like you should have some power plugs ready to go for those who want to, you know, upfit their 
the camper. Oh, uh, up for their camping. The other interesting part I thought with this is there's no, um, there's a lot of bugs, but there's, there's no um, parking sensors. There's zero parking sensors. So if you're pulling into something or if you're reversing into something, not only do you not have any cameras, but you don't have no sensors. There's no round or parking sensors. So that's interesting. 5,000 pound towic, towage. This is, this kind of got me a little bit. So this is an option too. The option is, you know, all the way back. You can lock and, you know, get out of the door there. And then this opens here. But I, again, I was on the website this morning. So 270 degree openings, right? I was on the website this morning and they actually make um, an outfitter like kit to put in the handle to get in because if you can tell, I don't know if you can tell with the video, but this, this is my kneecap. This is mid thigh. <laughs> so, uh, that step down is a lot easier. I've actually been using this a lot. I've been, uh, this over here. Yeah, this is great. So I've been sitting down and putting on my golf shoes this week. <laughs> so that's been great. I can't get in the back. That's not happening. So I just find it so interesting. So uh, easy to drive, pretty comfortable. Uh, stay off the bad roads. Uh, steers really easily. You can park it easy because you have the front tires are all the way forward on this um, wheelbase. And so it's easy to, to pull in and park. Uh, good fuel economy. What did I get? 20 some miles per gallon. I mean, that's pretty damn good in a vehicle this size. Good payload capacity, 3,700 3, pounds. Uh, towing 5,000, so that's a small boat. So you can definitely do a camper rig in here and a boat and enjoy the you know, the, the uh, summertime on the river and then the water. Um, yeah, overall though, I thought this interesting things. Oh, this is 350 bucks, the cargo perdition. Picked it up too. I just, again, I thought, you know, it's so interesting. And that steering stock, did I, oh, I didn't show you that one. Let me get to that one. The, not steering stock, but the shifter. This is like the apex of what's interesting in this vehicle. And again, I've had a great week. I mean, it's so much fun to drive these different vehicles and I've never driven something like this, but Again, I gotta, I gotta grab here because I'm on the short side. But um, yeah, that's your shifter. <laughs> it's just so interesting, you know. Again, massive vehicle, small shifter, small screens. Things just don't feel in proportion. But uh, fifty-five, fifty-six thousand dollars thing was. You can option it up. I think that goes up to sixty if you do all the different bells and whistles um, for all the options. But you're adding chrome grill or or alloy wheels minor, minor things. So that's kind of, you know, like I said, overall, pretty impressed with it. I can definitely see why they sell a lot of these. A few things are kind of an oddball head scratcher to me, but overall, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's a good, good rig. And uh, I'm curious you guys thoughts down below. Put your thoughts on what you guys think of this vehicle. Check out the other videos over here, website down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.